Good morning to all of you and thanks to MPOC for organizing a very interesting visit to palm fields and also to the factory. In the last two days I had a very informative and engaging discussions with many of you and it was definitely a learning experience. Friends, when we are discussing this important topic, it's always important for us to understand that we are part of a commercial world. There was a saying that everything is fair in love and war. And in today's world, people say everything is fair in love, war and business. So when you are talking about NGOs, when you are talking about policy making, when you are talking about a regulatory regime, please appreciate that there are various tools and techniques how people would like to engage with you either to promote your commercial interest or to demote your commercial interest or to promote their own interest. So when we are talking about NGOs, please do not think that they are in today's world are someone who is very much dedicated, interested in doing poverty alleviation, elimination of uh, illiteracy and whole lot of those so-called social cause. Anything and everything in this world today needs resources, needs opinion leaders, needs people, those who can help you in promoting your cause, whether it is a social cause, political cause, business cause or in any other name, form or shape. So when we are discussing this issue, I am going to present some of the facts to you that how people project or try to bring their arguments, what agenda they have, I am not interested in that. But as a country, as India, which is a developing economy and we today all talk about one of the fastest economy, growing economy in the world, how it is going to impact us, what is our experience? And for any other country, including Malaysia, how you should be ready to face such challenges because they will remain forever because it is their business. They have to continue to do something to remain in existence, to attract funds and attention from various sides. So let's go through and then we'll see how we proceed on this aspect. Most of the information, virtually I will say all the data and whatever you are finding is all from official authentic sources. And all the views which I am going to discuss here are my personal views, not of any organization which I am representing. This, in this presentation, what I am going to share with you is why developing economies are prime target. Why people are attacking India or any activity in Malaysia or Indonesia or in Pakistan or Bangladesh? Why people target us? Why? It's important for us to understand. Size of NGO sector in India, how big they are? Are there just few couple of them, those who name were known to us or what is the size? Foreign funded NGOs in India, after all they travel, they stay in five star, they fly business class. Who is funding them? After all, from where the money is coming, somebody is funding. So what are the sources, how it is happening and how NGOs build their case and generate funding? It's like a business strategy. You are in a business, like earlier presentation, a fantastic presentation was there that you have a business case, come and apply, get the grant. Similarly, there is a fund available for NGOs. They build a case, they apply, they get the grant. And how they do it, we'll briefly discuss that. New issues, because after all, after a certain time, I, I always say the flavor of the month. Nowadays, flavor of the month is sustainability. Very soon you will have a new flavor called animal welfare. Maybe you will have a new flavor, something which will emerge soon. So they are also thinking people because they have to attract attention. They have to attract funds. So they are also thinking. So don't be afraid that tomorrow you will have a new agenda on your table for which you have to handle. So we have to be ready for that. And then, what are the actions taken by government of India? It, it can't be let loose in the name of NGOs. There has to be a discipline, there has to be accountability, there has to be a credibility in the system. And then, what is the way forward for palm oil industry? Because you are not only the producer, we are also the consumer. And people are now accusing us that because of us, the palm oil industry is growing. If India stops consuming palm, Palm will not grow. So, we are the culprit. Now, this is the another side of the story. 
Now we have to look at those things. So why they are targeting developing economies? It's pure business case, nothing sentimental or emotional here. Look at what the world is going to do. The world is growing. Today we are talking about 2015 into projected beyond 2008. If you look into the growth rate, most of the developed economies, OECD economies, either their population is stagnant or negative. But they also have a desire to run their factories, their economy should grow. So which are the markets where the money is? It's a developing economy. Countries like India, China, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, we are growing economy. We will support, Asia will support the world's growth. Now if, think of a situation, so far, sitting in West, I was dominating the world, I was dictating everything and suddenly balance of power is shifting from me to my competition or to someone else. Please think like a human being. Would you like it? We don't like it. So what to do? Retain this power as long as you can and use all possible options to retain that power, to retain that hegemony, to see that we are superior than you. And this is all part of that game. Now look at the projections. In 1950, there were many Western countries, those who were most populous countries, they, and population is actually the fundamental of any consumption economy which supports economic activity and other things. In 15, you will find many of them faded out. It is mainly the developing economies and 2050, the future, down the line 30 years. Other than US, all are us, the developing economy, either from Africa or Asia. There is no more Western world. It means who decides in the market, the consumers. Who will become the consumers? We will become the consumers. We have to dictate what we want from the world market. Who likes it? Nobody wants it. Till that, yesterday, I was the boss and suddenly I am retired and you become the boss and then you started dictating, do this and do that. I will not like it. It's a human nature. And this is all game. Economic activity is not science. It is basically a sociology use of science and technology and law, whatever you talk about. So people's behavior we have to understand and then we move forward from there. <coughs> now look into the shift in economic power. It's OECD data. What it says, if you look into how the world is going to move, all OECD countries are negative trend in GDP share and all known OECD, China, India are in upward trend. Facts are well known. Who wants to leave this opportunity? Now, there is only two ways. You cannot stop me. But what you can do is, you can delay my process. You can act as a speed breaker. You can act as a, you know, I, I can create a lot of potholes on your way so that you don't run fast. More there is a pothole, more you will depend or slow down your speed. It means more longer duration I have to decide what you will do. It's pure political equation which one has to look at it. Now, what they target? They are very defined. NGOs, the best part of NGOs are they are extremely focused, not like many of us as a corporate manager. Somewhere we have to talk about business, somewhere we have to talk about legal issues, somebody is something else. NGOs have a single point agenda because that is their byline. You will work on environment and this is a million dollar for you. Morning, evening, day, in, out, they will only talk of environment and they will continue to dig out issues of environment. Think how many CEOs in corporate world has a focused approach, only sales, no. He has to also think of factory, he has to think of HR, he has to think of finance, he has to think of expansion. You cannot compete with focus there. It means as an industry, we have to have a unified approach how to handle that. So what is target? Target energy security. Without energy, you cannot have industrialization, you cannot have prosperity. Food security. Go back to history. Around the world, <coughs> including modern history, whenever there was a crisis, including what we have seen in Middle East or in Russia or, you know, CIS countries, the social movement started somewhere either related to food inflation, food scarcity or something else. So food security is extremely important to retain a stable political environment and then target mega projects. Because mega project means 
So far what I was importing from outside, I'm not importing, I will do my own generation. It means who is losing business? Somebody else. More I become self-reliant, more I'm trying to shrink somebody else's market. Now in this game, if my market of a billion dollar is shrinking every year, can't I spend a million dollar to retain it? It's a, it makes business sense for me. So who will do for me? I can't have my manager. Then what I have to do? I may look for agencies like you look for marketing and communication agency to promote your brand. I look for agencies, those who promote my interest by hurting someone else's interest. And it's fair. That's the way we operate in this commercial world. So I think this is where today, unfortunately, the things are happening. So all these activities will ensure that export market of their donors will remain intact. If in India, I say you are not supposed to use genetically modified seeds, it means I cannot increase my productivity the way my population is increasing, then I have to depend on someone else to feed me. It means it is their market. I'm giving market my opportunity to someone else and they are growing. It's a simple game. So there is a way to look at it and I'll give you a couple of examples why things are happening. Now, what is the scale of NGOs in India? Central Bureau of Investigation, which is the apex investigation body in India, reporting to the Prime Minister office, Supreme Court of India asked them, please identify how many of them are there, what they do, how they do, etc, etc. So what has happened? CBI disclosed to Supreme Court of India, there are 3.1 million NGOs in India, double than the primary school in India. This is the scale of this business. 3.1 million NGOs operate in India and the schools are only, you can say 1.5 a million. They are 250 times than the number of government hospitals, 400 people, means out of 400 people, there is one NGO and there are one person, one policeman after 709 people. So look at, there are more concentrated in a police force in India. This is the ground reality and this is disclosed to the Prime Minister of India or the Supreme Court of India. So I'm saying this is all official data here. Who is funding them? After all these NGOs, still, you know what is the ground reality in India? Still there is a poverty? Is there a illiteracy? Is there a health issues? So what they were doing so all, all those years? We have to think about it. Less than 10% of NGOs have compiled with the requirement of submitting balance sheet and income expenditure statement with the registrar of societies of about 3 million NGOs, only 0.3 has submitted their annual statements. And that's why this is really a cause of concern from where the money is going, what they are doing, where it is, you know, used. How much money came to India? In 1415, just 3,000 NGOs got 3.3 billion dollars. What is the fund of MPOC for promotion of farm? Think about it. This is where the competition is. Your competitor is having much more resources to devote to defame you and you don't have a resources to protect your goodwill. Think from that angle. Total funds received from abroad during the last three years is something about 510 billion Indian rupees. It's not a small amount. And they are bound to make impact. After all, this money is going somewhere. 80% of funding went to NGOs based in seven states. Delhi, Andhra, Maharashtra, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and West Bengal. Please think carefully. These are not poor states of India. These are not underdeveloped states of India. These are the states where the maximum industrial and economic activity happens in India. Can you see the correlation? And this is what we have to read between the lines, okay, why it is happening here. So please note, the primary role is not to work for backward people or backward states. Then, what they do? And look at, 
there is a substantial increase. Whenever there is a political transition in any country, it's a time to influence the thought, it's the time to influence the policy making systems. And you see sudden action activities and there is a sudden flow of funds happening in these areas. It's a very well planned game. Are you ready for it? And every country has to be clear that we have to look into how to go about it. Now look at it. <coughs> NGOs target development projects, nuclear power, uranium mine, coal, hydro, mega industrial project, minings, limestone for cement, GMOs. These are the current agenda which are very well documented and defined by government agencies and submitted the report to the concerned authorities. Take example, I'm giving you a couple of examples to put the case very clearly. Power consumption in India is growing. We are going for industrialization. India is a huge economy. Most of the rural economy needs still power. So if per capita consumption of power is a benchmark of develop, developed society or welfare of society. So we have power consumption demand. So what is happening? This is the global mix of power. You have natural gas, coal, petroleum. Now we are talking of renewable and little bit word is talking about nuclear. So all these renewable is still if you see this a huge thing and moreover these are evolving sciences. They are not yet fully established. They are expensive, they are unreliable and they may not be suitable in every location. So what is happening? Energy consumption if you look at around the world is growing. It's not only India and the sources can be Oil is growing, natural gas demand is growing, coal demand is growing, nuclear demand is growing, hydro demand is growing, wind is growing, solar is growing, geothermal, biofuel, all forms of energy demand is growing because there is a need for it. Now look at what energy and nuclear is all about. Around the world when we are talking of clean energy, the demand for nuclear is going up. Now the important point is India should not go nuclear. Everyone is demanding. Everyone is doing it, but you can't do it. One side we talk in clean energy sources, we have a climate summit. We want clean energy, but you cannot use clean energy. You cannot use nuclear. Okay, there can be ideological issues. Let's take it forward. In 2011, if you see the whole thing, it's a completely proper designed activity and this is part of a secret report submitted to government of India by investigation agencies that this is actually happening on ground. That there is a well planned activity against nuclear program into this. Where are the mines? Where are the nuclear projects? And local NGOs go and agitate against those things. Take another example. Coal. World is consuming coal, demand is going for coal. But in India, you can't use coal. So you can't use an uh, a nuclear, you can't use coal. India is one of the largest reserves, reservoirs of coal for power sector. And we assume that if we are allowed to use coal, we can have our in-house requirement for about 100 plus years for the requirement. And this is where all mega power projects are targeted. Now impact will be, if we don't do coal mining, it is hurting the local development, it is hurting the power sector, our power sectors are having, we have large number of project, power projects installed, but they are not working because fuel supply is not lined up. If I am not taking my mining coal out, then what I have to do? Go back and look at the statistics. India was one of the largest coal importer from the world market. Who is exporting coal to me? Will they like India should become self-sufficient in coal? They don't want it. So what is the best thing? Wherever coal mining happening, stop them, protest them, defame them, whatever you do. How much it costs? Compared to how much money I make in exporting coal to India? Think about it. It means extraction industry, the mining industry, India should stop mining, they are eco-friend, they are not eco-friendly. They disturb biodiversity, they disturb wildlife, they disturb local society, etc, etc, etc. 
the people those who are ex extracting coal in the world market and supplying to india same issues are not raised there please understand it is only in my market not the source so there is a design in madness then in anti industrial activity any large project make in india prime minister's ambitious program make in india if everything you make in india where i will export india is a huge market so any large industrial project whether it is a polymer industry whether it is a textile industry whether it is a metal industry whether it is anything no india should not go for large scale industrialization actually india is suitable for small tiny cottage cottage industry it means you cannot adopt technologies you cannot have modern features you cannot have automation you cannot have whatever world needs so you grow small consume small don't disturb my market be a localized economy don't have a ambition to be part of the world economy sorry if india is thinking that way it's a bad behavior so this is the way we are given now with this background what is the question they don't want india to produce nuclear power coal power hydro power who will provide energy to india think about it one ngo says don't go for nuclear another says don't go for coal third says hydro power is bad then what we should do when you ask this question back to them thank you very much where is the answer no that's not my job you think it's your country why are you asking us we are here to tell you this is bad what is good i don't know so this is where we have to look at it if there is no mining who will provide input material for steel power aluminium fertilizer copper etc 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 sectors this is ground reality and these facts are in front of you and they have no answers so what ngos are doing to hurt so far i have looked into industrial sector now look at the food security this is projections by 2030 india will need virtually everything more because my population is growing on an average india will need this is our conservative estimate that we will need 20 million tons of additional food every year because my population is growing for growing 20 million additional food in the same land mass i have to explore better options and better technologies no you can't do that they are bad they are not eco friendly you want food import we will provide you but don't grow yourself this is the way the food security works in india so ngos agenda is when it comes to food security stop new technology seed trials protest against time tested low cost agrochemicals never target mnc products look at this this pesticide is bad you will come to know soon they i don't know whether they are hurting palm or not yet because good part was that i when i visited the farms i found there is consumption of chemicals is very very less but in other sectors suddenly you will find the most popular chemical till yesterday which was patented was very much allowed the day this product goes off patent there is a protest starts this chemical is bad stop it till yesterday it was all fine because there is a new patented chemical available in the world market so unless this chemical moves out how that chemical will find a place in it it's it's a game plan target indian food quality and create new issues so that cost of production goes up certification i'm sure palm industry must be facing certification issues add this certificate have this certificate and have this certificate and have this certificate imagine if you have to spend 5 dollar for each certificate per ton and there are 10 certificates what is the cost doing nothing 50 dollar per ton your cost of production has gone up a customer is not going to pay for it what they say these certifications are actually entry certificate to the world market don't expect premium with certificate they are pre conditions not for premium and this politics of trade continues and there are ways to manage and handle those things force expensive production system in line with donors demand to kill india's competitors in the world market 
to eliminate competition. Right now, I'm handling a case for farmers on animal welfare. The way you are keeping birds is not enough. Give them at least four times more space. It means if I in the same farm, if I follow their guidelines, my production goes down by one third to one fourth. Not viable. So today I'm exporting eggs or egg powder. Tomorrow I'll start importing. And, and if you go into detail today, unfortunately, I don't have a time. I can give you precise numbers how the cost of production is going to be impacted, where I'm exporting, how that market will survive and how I'm going to lose. So in order to protect their market, they have to disturb my market. And it's a part of a game plan. And I will not say sorry for that, but I assume that it is a part of their strategy. And create fear psychosis among consumers in the name of food safety, environment, child labor, pollution. So as a consumer, consumers generally do not get facts. So they say, no, no, you are consuming palm, you are consuming this product from India. Be careful, they use child labor. They destroy life, wildlife, they do this, do this. Are you party to that? As a common man, I feel sorry. I think, am I doing crime? So I should prevent it. It's a human psychology. And minute I reduce my intake, your market shrinks. And somebody else takes over that gap. So what will be the outcomes of all in conceit movements here? India is already importing 23 billion dollar worth of agro products. We are already doing it. If this budget goes to 100 billion, where is the money left in India for development work, education work, healthcare, etc. Affordable local agriculture technologies will become useless. Agriculture technologies will be imported with IPR and other riders and export will collapse due to cost escalations. Farmers and consumers both will suffer. This will lead to political unrest. NGOs will get support from their donors to meet the targeted objective. They will meet their business objective. That was their plan. And then this is the bare business model. They are not bothered about local constraints of developing economies and other pressing priorities. So how they operate. Now this is also you have to be very careful when you are looking at it. They ask some local expert, local NGO, can you prepare a paper for me? What they do, what are not, because they are outsiders. They don't understand, understand the intricacies of the system. They use the local resource to generate the data. And then they take this report, go and present in international forums and to their governments. You see, this is where things are happening. Give us fund, we will go and we'll help them how to reform. How to improve, we know better than them. And there are surplus funds anyway available in the world. Money is not in a short supply so, and it meets the objective. So in what name these funds will come? They will not come in the name of I will work on anti-nuclear policy in India. I will work for anti-mining policy in India. You will not find this. They all are salesmen. They will use sellable concepts, sellable technologies, sellable vocabulary. And the vocabularies are for the protection of human rights, just deal for project with the people affected from the project, protection of livelihood of indigenous people, protection of religious freedom, democratic and accountable government, economic fairness, and there can be many new terminologies. Keep watching. You will find new theories and new terminologies emerging. So what are the future plans in India against palm oil imports? Let me tell you, it's not only you here. We will be targeted. India is culprit. You are promoting destruction of biodiversity, wildlife in Indonesia, Malaysia. So you stop it. You need oil. I can supply soya from America and Brazil and Argentina. Don't worry. You will get oil. But stop consuming palm. Wait and see. Gear up yourself. That will happen. Construction industry. E-waste. Huge electronic. Everybody is consuming. So if e-waste is becoming a challenge, what will happen? Think about it. Special investment regions, which under Make in India government is doing it, they are already planning to hit us. River linking project, we know in part of India is a drought product surplus. We want to link the rivers. No, this will disturb biodiversity. Let the money, water goes waste into the sea. You can't use it. Your people are suffering from famine or poor quality of productivity because of lack of rain. That's not my problem, but you can't link the rivers. 
it's against so called environment biodiversity etc etc and industrial corridors they are bad for india good for us so new issues in agriculture will be climate change animal welfare fertilizer sector chemical fertilizers are bad generic agrochemicals but never patented ones and campaign against large farms any intervention in agriculture is bad they don't share any study supported by credible scientific data from unbiased sources please read their documents very very carefully they pick and choose the data mix and match to suit their agenda by creating confusion in the kid minds of people what indian government has done to minimize them so there has to be a rectification revised guidelines on foreign funding who should get who should not get there has to be a process registration and fund utilization certificate is mandatory office bearers should declare their assets government permission is mandatory for accepting foreign funding annual report is now mandatory they have to share sources of fund activities undertaken details about key people including directors and their assets large number of people paper ngos uh, deregistering de government is deregistered them and central and state government courts parliament monitoring ngos work and activities because we have seen what all is happening palm is also a target you all must be having facts and figures i will take last one minute to finish this let me share some interesting facts about the palm here we all talk about eco friendly what is the waterfront in oil olive consumes the maximum amount of water have you ever seen any campaign against olive oil anywhere in the world even you go to internet and type ngos against olive nothing comes can you imagine can you imagine this who supplies the olive and olive consumes the maximum amount of water they are going to target sugarcane they target rice they target every other thing which consumes more water they have never targeted olive and this report is from unesco institute of water education netherlands can you see there is a logic let me give you another example which one is bad for health if you go start from the top to one on that look at the last three palm is bad but beef fat and butter fat are worse than them when it comes to nutritional profiling have you ever seen any ngos targeting butter fat anyone have you ever seen don't consume eh, milk fat think about it at least we are superior than butter fat so what i'm trying to say is that there is a design please be careful so what is the message have you heard anything bad news protesting on olive as a water guzzler crop or lard or milk which is bad for health no why these will hurt their business interest of donors of ngos and why they should destroy their own commercial interest obviously one has to be very careful now why things are becoming complicated for you look at two important points 1985 around and then 2005 6 around these are the time when palm industry challenged the status quo of the world oil business you were small you were not a threat today you are actually a threat for my business interest so i have to fix you because of you as palm industry i am not able to dictate the market and look at the price movement i have to actually follow you i can't go beyond you so what palm has done palm has actually becoming a reference point for the world oil pricing system so i cannot charge more i cannot dictate whether my cost of production goes up goes down whatever happens i cannot go beyond 5 to 10 15% of palm and this is actually a irritating factor for me so if palm will down be uh, reduced i have a more play more say in the market and that is what my business interest is all about first they targeted look at this in india mustard when soya came to india the first target is mustard is bad for health large number of reports emerged in public space why mustard is bad mustard is non edible grade it contains pungency it is a uric acid and this and that everything is bad people were educated you are actually consuming a bad oil good oil is soya oil and go back again on the internet and look at the research is uric acid bad no conclusive evidence then why you made noise of it 
because I wanted to divert customer from you to me. Simple. It's a business strategy. It's a marketing communication. And that happens. So this will also happen to Palm. So please get ready your facts and figures for consumers also, not only the policymakers. So what is the way forward? I'm sure you have fantastic information, huge database. You must have done a lot of work. But I have, as my own experience, I would like to say some very fundamental issues. Please ask them what is the source of data when somebody says Palm is bad, source of data. So we have done a study. Who are you? Any independent source? You have to be very assertive and clear. Don't be defensive. It's a marketing game. You have to be very clear on that. Request to palm oil industry. Your competition is focused, filled with resources. You have to think how to counter it. This will not stop. Please understand this. This will continue. It's a part of the game. So India is the largest market for you. Protect it by educating people. Not by simply saying we are good. You have to do a lot of action on ground in India. Because yesterday when I was sitting there, I was tweeting and one uh, NGO representative wrote, Mr. Sardana, you are writing about palm, it is good, but you know it is bad for environment. So I says, thank you very much. Uh, can you send me the reference? You know, I actually wrote on that. He communicated to me. He, I wrote a piece on that why palm is bad. I says, I would like to read that paper. Can you please send me the link? Till now, I am waiting for that link. I want to go into the facts. What was the source of information? I said, I would like to investigate the source of information. Since yesterday, I'm waiting for the link which he wrote. Because he knows also in India that when I write, I go into details. So this is communication issue when one has to look at. All stakeholders must develop a focused policy action plan to project facts to the consumers and develop an effective communication strategy. You have to be very, it's a pure warfare on communication strategy and with social media coming up, it will become much more intense. Because every website, every Facebook page is a channel in its own. You have to think very, very constructively. If you need any help, I'll be more than happy to share my experiences. So I wish you all the best. It's open for discussion. And thank you very much for inviting me.